Okay, so when we're talking about square roots, that's when we use this symbol and when we see that symbol. Sometimes we'll see, for example, this symbol that sort of wraps around a number like 4. The square root of 4 equals 2. It's called a square root because we're talking about what two, a number multiplying by itself twice. Um, and <laughs> basically a square root is the opposite of doing exponents. 2 squared equals 4 but square root of 4 equals 2. So if I take that, do that uh, another example like that, let's say I had 3 squared equals 9. If I know 3 squared equals 9 from working with my exponents, then if I wanted to work backwards, and let's say I was only given the number 9, and I want to know, well, what, is, what number would it be that has to multiply by itself two times to get me 9? The way... I write that when I'm asking that question is like this. What I'm asking is, what is the square root of 9? What number is it that needs to multiply by itself only two times to get 9? And it happens to be 3. There are only a few numbers that actually can get you a nice, clean, whole number when you take the square root of it. And really, if you think about it, you can figure that out by working down this pattern here. 4 squared equals 16. What's the next number we can do? 5. 5 squared equals 25. The next number we can do after 5, if we stay with whole numbers, is 6 squared equals 36. And 7 squared equals 49, and so on. So now if we do this in reverse, let's say I want to now find out what number multiplied by itself will get me 16. When I only multiply by itself two times, that means I'm taking the square root, well, it happens to be 4. So square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 36 is 6. And square root of 49 is 7. Now, what can get really crazy is if you're trying to find out, let's say you're given a number that's not what we call a square. Let's say you're given a number like 11. 11 is not a number we'll ever get if we multiply a whole number by itself two times. So if we want to take the square root of 11, it's going to be really hard to figure out what it is. It's not going to be a nice, clean, whole number. It's going to be one crazy, ongoing number. Um, but what we can do if we want to estimate is we can think, well, I know what square root of 9 is. It's a 3, and I know the next square is a 16. I know the square root of 16 equals 4. So about where does 11 fall between 9 and 16? I'd say 11 is a little bit closer to 9. So I'd say the answer to this is going to be 3 point something, but it's going to be a number not too much bigger. Not, not so much closer to 4, but maybe closer to 3. So if I do this on the calculator, show the calculator, we will clear this, this window. I hope we can see this in the camera. And if I take the square root of uh, 11, I get 3.31, and then it goes on forever with some other numbers. But let's just put 3.31 as our estimate. 3.31, sure enough, is a number that's slightly closer to 3 than it is to 4. Just like 11 is slightly closer to 9 than it is to 16. So we like to say that if we had to estimate and we didn't have a calculator, and I was given a crazy number like 11 to take the square root of, I could come up with a very close guess by taking the square root of the two numbers on each side of 11 that are squares. So I'll try that one more time just to give you another example. And Let's see. Let's say I gave you the square root of 7. And you know that there are no two numbers, two whole numbers you can multiply together to get 7. So therefore, if you're taking the square root of 7, you're going to get something in between some numbers. So what is a number, a whole number, that is a square before square root of 7? Well, it would be 4. So I know that square root of 4 equals 2. What is a square that comes after 7? 
in the numbers. Let's see, it would be 9. So square root of 9 then would be 3. So now I know the square root of 7 falls somewhere between 2 and 3. Now if I compare 7 with 4 and 9, I'm at a number that's a teeny bit closer to 9, but not a whole lot. It's almost like a number right in the middle between 4 and 9. So I'm going to say that the square root just by oops, the square root of 7, if I were to guess, is something like 2.6. So I'm going to do that in the calculator, and we will see what it is. Square root of 7 equals 2.6. 45751311. It goes on forever, but if I just take that first the number in the tenth value, sure enough, just by guessing, I was able to get the same number that's on the calculator.